Hello crafty friends! Welcome to another American Cross Design Team layout where I'll be using mixed media from the Vicki Booten line and her All the Good Things line. I love that American Crafts has created an entire line of, complete line of mixed media products. And what I'm showing you here, it looks like I'm showing you a blank page, but I'm showing you how I use the stamp positioner. I measured the width of the stamp that I was going to use and then I moved the paper along according to how big the stamp was so that I could get an evenly spaced image. So for this leaf stamp, I moved it at the three mark, the six mark, the nine mark, the 12 mark, and the, you know, you get the picture. So you can create a, a line, a, a row of stamped images and create your own pattern. So you'll be able to see here once I add the pigment ink, and I love these color wheels. These are really smooth and creamy consistency pigment inks. So right here I'm going to trim and you'll be able to see once I get this trimmed off. I didn't measure, I just filled up the page with the images. So as long as you have a straight edge, this is going to work. So I'm using my paper trimmer and we're going to cut it down. And once I get it cut down, you'll see that it resembles the shape of a pot like a potted plant, a terracotta pot, or a short and wide vase. <laughs> and then because I have the images lined up straight using the stamp positioner tool, I can just follow along and cut along those to make sure that the edges are all straight on my object here. There we go, kind of resembles a pot now. So once I start adding the pigment ink, the embossed, the white embossed images will show up. We're going to start with the pink. And I love that these, these are highly saturated and pigmented ink pads that are loaded with lots of color, lots of ink, so that uh, they're very creamy and easy to blend. So we'll just keep going here, and because they stay reactive and don't dry quickly, you're able to keep going on and blending them really well. So I'll go down until I get enough pink and then we're going to go to yellow here. And then if you start at the bottom and work up towards the pink, you'll get a row of orange. So that's what I'm going to try to do is start with the clean yellow and then blend it up into the pink. Now we're going to go to light green, and I love these bristle, bristle brushes she has. They, it comes with two bristle brushes and a mixing palette. I really love these. These are brand new. So we've got the light green, and I need to blend it up into the green, the yellow a little bit. Now we're going to go to the turquoise. And just make sure each row that you go through, it needs to be blended up into the color previously. And I, I think because of the floral images, I always like to use like a clean graphic or a linear design when I'm using some organic elements like this. So we'll use the dark cobalt at the very bottom to give almost a the bottom edge of the rainbow. I think I go back here and add some more pink. Yeah, I do. And that's a good thing that it stays workable for a longer period because I wanted to blend into the yellow more and get a little bit more orange. It doesn't show up on camera, but there is some orange on the page when it's done. And there's a close up of those bristle brushes. Now what we're going to do is dry this off with a dry paper towel. And here you'll be able to see how I scored all three bottom edges so that I could fold it over and create a 3D effect on the page. It'll stand up off the background paper. So there you can see any scoring tool where you can get an even like you have to make sure the edge that you're scoring is going to be even all the way around so it'll sit evenly on the page. So you can see I'm cutting off the corner just so when I score it over there's not a double, double folded and it won't bunch up, kind of like in sewing. 
So you want to cut off the corner there. So I'm going to start go about folding this up, trying to get it even so that I will lay evenly on the page. So it's a nice bright rainbow. And I also heat embossed some extra images with the stamps and then used a dry nib to add some of the pigment ink into the different sections of the stamp just to highlight it so it wasn't a flat image with a single color. So you can see I'm adding some to the yellow. So the yellow I'll, I'll oh, right now I'm going back and these are extra images. I figured, hey, I'm heat embossing. I might as well add some extra images around the rest of the page. That way I can add them to my layout and they'll kind of tie in with the, ter the pot. So here I'm adding some pink to the inside, to inside sections of the butterfly and then you just use a paper, dry paper towel to wipe off the pigment ink off of your white embossed areas. And I'll show you close up, see the pink? I just add some of the creamy pigment ink to the center to add some depth to that flower. I die cut these before I started the video just so you guys, because this is already a 24 minute video, video so I had to do some of it off camera. But I didn't want to cut too much out so you guys could see how I, how I got there. And that's the nib I'm talking about. They come, it comes from Ranger. There's, um, I think an ink essentials line. Just because it has a small tip so I can get into the wing areas of this bird. So my thinking on this is that the pot, the rainbow pot will be the highlight or the focal point of the page. And then I kind of want to have everything spilling out the top and some greenery and some floral images and birds and butterflies. This layout is going to be about um, how I like to get creative and paint. Uh, the photo on this page is going to be of a monstera leaf that I painted. I painted some you know, artwork to go over the headboard in, in our bedroom. So I really like the fact that that connects. My grandma and my mom are both painters, so I don't live near them, but I feel more connected to them when I do things like that that we always used to do together so and I also find if I am needing some ideas or need a boost for my mojo I'll go do a separate kind of art project and then when I come back to creating layouts I have lots more ideas so here I'm going to go back and finish on the bristle brushes And I just make, I'm making sure that they they coordinate and match. So here's the Vicky Booten foundation pages, and these are 140 pound paper that just handle the water with your mixed media really well. I love this paper as a background, as anything. I used it in a mini album where I used tons of water watercolor. Now you see the art crayons lined up at the top and what I'm going to do is use the Vicky Wooten water brushes and the art crayons to create watercolor. So I'm piling up the die cuts at the top like they're sort of growing out of the top of the little pot there. And you'll see me just piling up the different images and some colors and the yellow butterflies are going to go at the top. And then the thinking here is that I want to add purposeful color, like only behind the areas that I have the die cuts I, are, am I going to add the mixed media, the watercolor effect with these art crayons. And I've pre-colored into this little dish some of the different art crayons that I know I'm going to be using here. The bright green on the top left of the screen. Okay, so I'm placing the pin there so I know where the die cuts were so I can take away that 3D little vase. And so I'm going to use three types of watercolor here. I'm going to use the little splatter dots like you saw me tapping on the brush. And then I'm going to use, I know you guys have seen this, the packaging technique. So I'm going to add it to the, 
the packaging and add that there. And then I'll also add some stamped images. So I have three layers of media under the die cuts. And it just adds a lot of texture and layers and some interest to the page. So I'm just going to smush it around here. I'm just using a little tiny package that was already on the desk. I'm like, hey, I'll just grab that. And I have another package. And you can also mix these art crayons. Like here you see me grabbing the magenta and the peach to make a softer pink, similar to the die cut flower there. See, when you mix it, it is the right color. I'm just pouring that onto the little plastic packaging and smushing it around with the brush. That's why I like to use the water brush because you can add more water and get a variation in some lighter and darker areas. So we're just going to smush this and smush and smush until I like how it looks. And um, notice I'm focusing that on under where that pile of die cuts was. So we're going to do several layers. I'm going to go dry this off camera. Oops, I just mixed red and green, which we know makes brown. So I'm taking that off with a dry paper towel. And you notice it didn't stay in the paper. I just took it right off. So now we're going to go to more a more concentrated pink because that one's not showing up very well, mostly because I dry blotted it off. And I'm going to clean out that little well because the green and, and I'm going back to the magenta and the peach to make a clean pink again. Cleaning out the brush so I don't contaminate this pink. So we're going to do this again and you can go direct to the paper like this. Just dotting it around, adding some more water so there's a variation. And then you notice I'm also tapping so I get the dots as well. So each section that I did the smushing technique, I'll also add lots of little splatters. And then I'm getting another water brush that I filled here. Now we're going to go to yellow. Wait, where did I go? I think I went to the sink in my craft room. Oh, I opened up the blinds and I was like, no, that, that's not going to work. And shut them back. <laughs> my studio lights are definitely better than the stripes from the blinds. Okay, so here we go with the yellow. I've got a different brush. I'm going to put it on the plastic and smush it around and try to get it up there where I wanted the yellow butterfly. So I'll pile the yellow, yellow die cuts. And there, I, you can see that I've gone and add stamp, added stamped images to the different sections. The butterflies and tried to keep the color similar to the color that was splush, splashed. Whoa, splushed is a new word. Splashed and splotched and whatever. <laughs> okay, so there's the vase and you can kind of see that everything's going to be coming out of the top. And there's my photo. That's the Monstera leaf I painted. It. and I just use a self timer of course to capture myself in a little table outside in the backyard. I'm going to start piling the die cuts back on there now that this is dry and you'll notice it's flat and I put the, the smushing technique down at the bottom is under the photo. Now I'm going to add the yellow butterflies over the yellow area of watercolor. And I'm going to add the pink, mostly to where the pink is. This butterfly is going to go at the bottom corner just because I thought it needed some contrast with all the white in the picture. And you'll notice I laid the photo so that the green strip on the vase or pot is kind of lined up with the monstera leaf I painted in the photo. So it kind of just leads your eye to the photo. And then my jeans are kind of even down with the blue part. And I'm wearing a pink sweater, so. Kind of the colors in the photo. I wanted to go for some bright, clean colors like in the photo. So I love these Vicky Booten thickers. They're in the Pretty Notes, I think, is the name of the pattern paper. This is little, tiny white handwriting on a black 
nice clean crisp font here so I'm gonna put creative and then I'll hand letter B so it'll be it'll say be creative Using the edge of the ruler to place the title there. I want it a little bit higher so that the bottom edge of the title lines up with the photo. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to layer this vase up and I need two layers of foam underneath so that it's a quarter inch and that way it will after I score it, you'll see that it is up off the back of the page, like I've said. And the, that will mean that the edge of the photo that's not on the pot is going to be ha have to be propped up with foam as well. So I'm trying out some of the... I love that Vicky Booten and American Crafts came out with this new 7x10. I think it's 7x10. It might be 7.5. But it's kind of sized for Traveler's Notebooks. So I'm trying out some different patterns here behind the photo to kind of bring a little bit of attention to it. And I'm not quite sure I'm going to leave them at this point. I mean, I like them in the video, but I think... That there was just so much color on the page I needed to add some black and white like a famous designer said every room needs some black and white so I'm gonna add some black here to the top of the pot because that title is very strong 
So I'm going to be adding a tiny bit and the leaves are just going to, leaves are just going to poke out enough that you'll be able to see them and it'll kind of balance out. So three places on the page will have the black leaves from the die cut pack in the Vicky Booten line. So I'm just going to fudge around here with this and try to decide where I want the leaves. And I realized after I was moving everything around up here, I kept fidgeting with it. I noticed that the birds looked better if they weren't flat, horizontally level. They looked more organic or active if I tilted them. You'll notice the top bird on the right is tilted down. I know birds are mostly usually always moving, so I kind of like them tilted, like they look like they're in action. So you'll notice on the final photos that I show, they're going to be tilted even more. So I have another piece of pattern paper. It's a cobalt blue, similar to the flower that I punched the, from the Stampin' die cut pack there um, are die cuts and that's how I cut out most of the stamped images that go on this layout that I heat embossed. Now there's not a die cut for that butterfly but it's easy to hand cut the butterfly. So here I'm tilting the bird a little bit more and I kind of like that. It looks better. It looks more like they're just alive instead of just sitting there straight. <laughs> So you'll notice I needed a different, a smaller scale set of leaves, and I'm just cutting off some of these from the die cuts, and I can still use the die cut. I just rounded out where I cut off, and I'm a little bit off screen, but all I'm doing here is cutting out some smaller leaves, the black and white leaves, so that I can add them down here near the title. Sorry, I'm off camera, but the, there's the die cut. You can see it better now that I laid it down. There we go, I have one tiny leaf there. So I'm going to decide where to put that kind of purple blue. First I thought, well, I need it over here by the mixed media. And then I'm like, no, it kind of needs to be by the other dark blue section on the vase to kind of ground underneath the photo. I like it over there much better. So I'm going to probably cut a little bit off of this die cut here because I think it's just a little bit too big and grabs too much of your attention. So there's lots of layers there on the left and then there's a bunch piled up on the top right and then a tiny bit under the photo. So here's where I take out those pattern paper pieces and I just leave the photo with no pattern paper underneath it. I, I just think there's a lot going on on the page and and a lot of movements, so I don't really need those extra pattern paper pieces. And here I'm going to hand letter with the Tombow Fudunosuke brush pen. So I'm just going to hand letter the word B. Super easy. And then I'll go back and thicken up the downstrokes there. So thank you so much for joining me on this a little bit longer mixed media layout, but I really enjoyed working with mixed media products and I had so much fun just playing with the supplies. So I hope if you get a chance to use the Vicky Booten and American Cross new mixed media line, you'll, you'll tag me at artfully on Instagram and artfully creative on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much. And here's some close up stills that are quite a bit brighter so that you can see the details on the page.